Helen, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. What brings you to Congress? Well, I was invited to speak on the uh, just skills transition and equality jobs for young people. Um, I love being in these spaces because uh, typically you don't see a lot of young people in energy conferences, but the World Energy Congress does it differently. They have the Future Energy Leaders Program. And so I've seen young people on panels throughout the week um, and been able to meet just incredible young leaders driving change in their companies. So you head up something called Student Energy. What is Student Energy? So Student Energy, we're a global NGO, we're a charity. We focus on educating young people. And for us, kind of our mission is really about bridging the skills gap between young people passionate about energy, passionate about climate, and opportunities for them to make a real impact in this space. Um, and so we do this with a network of 50,000 young people in 130 countries around the world. Um, we've been around for about 15 years. Um, and we just see this real hunger and passion from young people to be involved, but the pathways aren't made available. So we do a lot of that kind of carving out the pathways, working collaboratively, trying to just make space for them in spaces where they're not typically included. So what kind of person gets involved? Um, a young person, 18 to 30, that's our age range that we work with. A young person, either within or outside of formal academia, um, who is just seeing this conversation really evolving and growing around them, around climate issues, around you know, social inequalities, all of these kind of connected elements of the energy transition, and um, is starting to kind of get a little bit interested, or maybe they're already in the space. We've got kind of various entry points to our programs, but it's somebody who's passionate, who really wants to make change happen, who wants to find a way to contribute um, towards positive impact for their communities, for their countries. Um, and so they'll find a space like Student Energy through our chapters program or through our virtual programs um, and get involved and become part of this global community. And why do you think they might not have had a voice before? I think why they might not have had a voice before, I think for a lot of young people it can feel, they can feel like there's a lot of barriers to getting involved in the energy space, especially if you don't come from a technical background. I think it feels like a space where you have to have the right language, the right kind of historical knowledge to really participate in conversations. Um, and I think as well, young people before kind of the rise of the internet, um, which I know has been ongoing now for many years, but the rise of the internet, I think also young people didn't necessarily feel like they could connect to um, this real kind of global network of like-minded individuals who, where there's a lot of kind of encouragement to co-learn, to learn about how things are in different contexts and really kind of feed that into your own perspective and critical thinking about what could work for your community. So presumably somebody joins your organization because they want to affect change. Mm -hmm. How do they, how does their knowledge base grow? How does their literacy grow as a consequence mm -hmm. of being involved and actively involved in that organization? Yeah, I mean, I would love to take credit and say that Student Energy, our educational tools, our curriculum, like, that's it. We provide all the knowledge. But honestly, I do think that a lot of the knowledge comes from engaging with their peers and just being part of that community. The way that all kind of observe these conversations happening among our global programs, it's incredible. Like, we've ended up sparking collaborations on clean cooking solutions with our chapters in Algeria and our chapters in Manitoba and Canada. And they'll kind of prototype um, they'll prototype a solution in the lab at University of Manitoba and then end up kind of bringing it out to Algeria to actually test it in communities. And it's this incredible kind of co-learning process um, and a lot of like youth to youth mentorship that I see happening as well. So uh, we do a lot of kind of filling in the gaps. We have a digital energy systems map. It breaks down the entire energy system in a really interactive, dynamic way with YouTube videos that are like, I think the most watched YouTube videos on Energy 101 um, on YouTube, which is exciting. But I really do think that it's like learning from each other. That's where the magic happens. We try also to bring young people to bigger spaces like COP, World Energy Congress, other major energy gatherings where they can learn from established experts and leaders in the space as well. And do you affect change? We do affect change. I mean, I think when we look at how this transition will happen over the next five years, over the next 10 years, because it is systems change, it will take time. It is all about young people. And as much as we're able to directly support young people with feeling confident, equipped to create change in their communities, and that can be anything from developing like a solar PV greenhouse, addressing food security with renewable energy, that can be to young people moving into um, a shipping company and starting to work on decarbonized um, zero carbon shipping solutions. Um, that, that is systems change. That's the change that we're going to need to see happen over the next five years. If we're not working with young people, if we're not including young people effectively in our policy planning, in our company transition plans, 
we're not future-proofing the work that we're doing now, and we can't sustain the momentum we need to see over the next five to 10 years. So student energy is doing important work and doing a lot of that kind of groundswell building, ensuring the community is there, the demand is there from young people. But it is ultimately up to sectors, it's up to um, policymakers to decide and kind of generate that willpower to really um, give young people the agency to succeed in what the future low carbon economy will look like. And, and what of the, the issue with skills and, and recruitment, mm. certainly within the energy sector, how do you facilitate that? Yeah, so for us it's about really filling in the gaps where we feel like traditional academia is, is, not, is not kind of offering the full picture. So a lot of our work is actually de building and developing those more transferable or soft skills. They have kind of all different terms now and be more and more getting referred to as green skills. There are things like adaptability, communications, problem solving, critical thinking, um, working with a team, project management. And so we do a lot of developing those skill sets through coaching, through the ways that our programs are designed. We have a career training program where young people actually get to work on a virtual capstone project with an energy company over the course of four months. And all of the experiential learning and skills development that comes with that means they're much more equipped to actually move into the quote unquote real world and do this work within a company throughout their lives. And so it's about really kind of bridging the gap where we feel like academia naturally just can't cover the full swath of skills that are needed. Um, and then in terms of technical skills, it depends. A lot of academic programs will offer that, but I think there's also a huge opportunity for business to actually play a role in supporting the technical skill development for young people as well. So what are the next steps for student energy? So we're developing our Student Energy 2030 vision. This is gonna define our big priorities over the next five years, but it's really focused on how can we scale up green jobs quickly. And this for us means supporting young people to move into careers where they can have a real measurable impact on accelerating the clean energy transition. We're also gonna massively scale up our entrepreneurship, um, our entrepreneurship wing where we train young entrepreneurs. We also directly grant make for new startups in the sector. Um, and ultimately support young people to just get projects going in their communities where, again, measurable impact, but that kind of catalytic effect of the different community members, the different kind of peers that they engage through that process is really where the magic happens. And I think we'll be really key in also managing a lot of kind of the social polarization we've been feeling around climate and energy issues of late. So I'm excited about what we'll be able to do over the next five years. And finally, the, the, obviously this year's theme is redesigning energy for people and planet. What does that mean to you and how does student energy be part of that journey? Mm, I love this theme. Um, I think it's, it's this critical connectivity that's been missing for the last decade um, between people and between our natural world. And so, like it's exactly what we advocate for. Our mission is to, to support, empower young people to accelerate a just, sustainable and equitable energy future. We're not just looking for a sustainable energy or a low carbon energy future. We're not just looking for an equitable energy future. We need both and recognizing that people are at the heart of this. They will be the people working on innovative solutions. They will be the community members and the adopters of these solutions. Um, they will be the voters and the policy makers um, of the policies that will sustain this transition. That just feels like it's really captured the crux of what we need to be focused on. It's not just decarbonization. It's people. It gives you hope. It does, absolutely. I mean, I, I, I often feel a little bit guilty that I do work in a fairly optimistic bent of the climate and energy world. Young people have so many solutions. They're so passionate about this work and they really have their whole lives ahead of them to make impact. So it feels like we're really setting up a, the trajectory towards a different, more equitable world. And that's really exciting. It's a great message. Helen, thank you thanks so for much. joining us. Thank you for having me.